Hello, this is an introduction to joins, and we'll be using the Northwind database for this demonstration. So we'll be, in particular, looking at products and categories and how to get fields from both of those tables into one select statement. As you can see, the products table has a foreign key in it of category ID, and that refers to the primary key over in categories, and a category can have more than one product in it. So let's, um, how do we extract data from those two things? Well, we can look at the products table and see the category ID for each of the products. So for instance, chai is in category one, aniseed syrup is in category two, but we don't know what category, what, what's the name of that category. And just to focus a little more on just certain columns, there we go, I just see the product names and the category IDs. But uh, which category is category one? Which one is category four? So I can go over and select from the categories table and look up and see that, oh, category one is the beverages category. Category four is the dairy products. And again, I can just focus down to just a couple of columns there. So great, I can use the category ID from the products table to look up the name of the category in the categories table. And we can do that for one or two records, but we really don't want to do that when we have a million products. So um, how, do we, how do we take this query and add in the category name as the next column? Well, let's try it. Let's just try to put the category name as the next column. And what we'll see is that we get a syntax error, invalid column name, category name, because there is no category name column in the products table. Okay, well, uh, let's add categories to the from statement. So there we go. You can see that I've added the categories table, just added it as a list item in the from statement. And notice that the, the syntax error has gone away on category name. But now I've got a syntax error on the category ID. And what it's telling me is that this is an ambiguous column name. Um, basically, if I look at the products table and the columns, I can see that there's a category ID in the products table. And then if I go over and look in the categories, I can see that there's also a category ID in the categories table. So what the what SQL Management Studio is telling me is that I'm not being specific enough. It's saying, which table would you like to get the category ID from? So let's be more specific. So um, I will qualify the category ID field with the name of the table that I want to receive it from. So here I have products.categoryID, and here we go. Uh, we can run this query. So I don't have any syntax errors, but I'm a little concerned that I have 702 rows that came back from this query uh, because I don't think I have that many categories or that many products. So let's, let's check that. So here's getting a count of the number of categories. I have nine different categories, and I have here 78 different products. So how am I getting 702 records back? Well, if I take the number of products and I multiply by the number of categories, it comes out to exactly that number. So let's run this again and see what's going on. So um, still I get my 702 rows, but let's take a little closer look. And now what I'm going to do is add this column here. So I'm going to show the category ID from products and also show the category ID from the categories table and run these. And I get my 702 rows and notice that um, for certain products, I have a category ID from the products table that doesn't match the category ID from the categories table. So I have chai being displayed next to all nine different categories, even though we know that the correct category is just this one. It's category one. And if you scroll down, you notice that that happens for every product. 
So uh, let's see, aniseed syrup is in category two, but it's being displayed next to every category, even though this is the only one that actually makes sense. So uh, what happens is if I just take these uh, tables and I join, or I don't join them, I just list them here, I haven't specified how the records from ca categories and products should be aligned. So what the database engine does is gives all possible combinations of products and categories and this is called a cross join. So it's not necessarily wrong but it's usually not what we want. So how do I limit it so that I only get for instance here's a record that I'm interested in where the category ID from products equals the category ID from categories. Here's another record that I'm interested in where the category ID from products equals the category ID from categories. So how do I keep those records and get rid of a record like this one? Well, I can do that with the WHERE clause. So notice this is the piece that I've added. So the rest of the query is exactly the same. I'm just adding this WHERE clause and limiting the records so that I'm only keeping the ones that are equal. So this makes a lot more sense. I have chai in the beverages category, aniseed syrup in the spreads category, and this looks a lot better. Uh, one oddity though is that the record count is now 77. So looking at the products table again, so I'm scratching my head a little bit at that, so let's, let's look and see if we can figure out why. So here's the products table, and I'm gonna scroll down and what you'll see at the bottom is that there's a product there uh, that has a null category ID. There's only one of them. And that record, of course, will not satisfy that equality. Right? So basically what's happening is I'm trying to say is null equal to the category ID over in the categories table? And that's false, and so we don't display that uh, that record. So here we have uh, the logic I think is correct here. I'm showing products next to next to their proper category, but I don't necessarily need to see these two fields here. Now that I've aligned them correctly, and I can see that the records are aligned correctly. Uh, we would normally not display those, so here it is without those. And now I show the product name directly next to the category that it belongs in. So this, this way of aligning the records from one table with the other ones is called a join. Right? So the way we've stated this is as a constraint in the WHERE clause. But it is a special kind of constraint in that it involves the primary key from one table and the foreign key from another table. So in this case, here's the primary key and here's the foreign key in products. So one way to imagine or, or conceptualize a join is as a constraint. It's like a WHERE clause, uh, but it is based on a couple of special fields. There's another way to conceptualize a join, and that is as if you take two tables and combine them in a very specific way. So the syntax for this is using the join syntax. So there it is, there you see it. Um, it's logically equivalent to the where clause join, but what you'll see here is that it's using a special operator and it also has some details about how the join uh, should occur. So this is always equivalent to the WHERE clause version. I like to format this like this. Uh, so SQL is space insensitive or white space insensitive. So um, this just helps me keep the everything organized a little better, especially when I have many tables involved in the join. So I suggest you learn both ways. Uh, if you look at legacy code, you might see it one way or another. And also that in certain contexts, one way could be clearer than the other. 
Uh, I like the join syntax in that it's very intentional. Uh, when I read somebody's code where they've said join, I'm very sure that they mean to join the two tables. Now conceptually this is a little different. It's, it's, you might think of this as an operator. It's like a plus sign or a multiply sign, but it's an operator between two tables. And then the on clause specifies uh, the details of how that operator will be used. Uh, notice that it's, very, it's not a list of tables. Uh, a list of tables would be separated by columns. So one last thing. Um, now that I've got two tables in a select statement, I have the potential to have ambiguous columns. So this works fine today uh, because product name is only occurs in the products table. Category name only occurs in the categories table. But what would happen in the future if someone put a category name in the products table? Then I would have it in both tables and this piece of code would not run anymore. So whenever, um, whenever you have more than one table, you should fully qualify every column like this. So it's products.productID, products.productName. And uh, that way uh, you will safeguard against future uh, changes in the column names. So that's the introduction to joins.